Welcome to Dorky Now. My name is Sonia Mansfield and Topic. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorky Now, Margot D. Hello, my friend. I want to see your ass in the air. Okay. And also joining us is our podcasting brother from another mother, Adam Risky from F This Movie. Hello, friend. Here's my ass in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. This week, we are dorking out about 1992's The Cutting Edge. We are on a 1992 run. This is like our third movie in a row. That's 1992, I think. It's written by Tony Gilroy. What? Yeah. Weird. I was surprised to see that. Who wrote, directed Michael Clayton. He wrote the Bourne movies. He wrote Rogue One. So weird. Uh, and it's bizarre. So bizarre. And directed by Mike. Paul Michael Glazer, who is Starsky from Starsky and Hutch, Starsky. also yep. directed The Running Man, which is on our list. And the air up there with Kevin Bacon. Yes. And he dropped the mic with Kazam. <laughs> <laughs> he dropped something. <laughs> uh, and it stars D.B. Sweeney. Uh, Adam, you're a big fan. Yeah. D.B. Sweeney. He's, he's your good man. people. He, he's good people. He did. Um, he. He. Seems nice. I'll put it like I, I'm not a big like huge fan of his work. I don't dislike his work. It's just I've never had much of an opinion of like Eight Men Out or Spawn or any of that stuff. But like um, he is like an ambassador for an independent baseball team called the Chicago Dogs that are like this baseball team near the airport. And he does all these like ads where he's just like, yeah, if you're a Chicago dog, you don't put ketchup on your hot dog. And I'm like, this is silly. I like this. <laughs> Margo, but then what... he did. a Yeah, he did a convention recently over by us and he seemed like a nice guy. I didn't go to meet him, but he seemed pleasant. OK, that's good to know. Margo, what did you say D.B. Sweeney was in our text thread? Oh, God damn it. He's like the TGI Fridays and John Cusack is the Outback Steakhouse. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and you then, can't get Cusack. <laughs> and once you said that, that's all I could see. Um, all, this movie also stars Moira Kelly, and she the whole movie, big eyes, big eyes, yeah, the whole big time. eyes, big eyes, the whole the time. apple, the Applebee's to Winona Ryder's Chili's. Yep, I fucking love Chili's. Uh, Roy Dotrice, let's sure as the coach. And Terry O'Quinn as uh, Moira Kelly's dad, also Step known father. As... <laughs> <laughs> the stepfather. <laughs> he's uh, the he's... stepfather. I didn't pick that up. He's yeah. no, no, no. He's her dad. He he was in a movie oh, he called. Is the stepfather. He is the Got stepfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm pulling reference. Got it. Yeah. And he's. I was lost. Ah! <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, he was on the show. <laughs> oh, I get it. Now I get it. So, Adam, this was a first time watch for you, right? Yeah, this has been if I've had like a mental cue in my head of movies from the 90s, I I should watch. But I never got around to this has been sitting there for like 25 years. So nice. this was this was a big relief to get off of that <laughs> list. Um, the, over the years. Well okay. last night? <laughs> oh, like a baby. Um, the. <laughs> Over the years, um, especially in college, so like when I was in school, I, I remember being in like the bookstore and this one girl was talking to her boyfriend about how much she loved The Cutting Edge. And I was just like, oh, I've never heard anybody like I remember that movie existed, but I've never heard anybody talk about that. And then after I heard that, like no bullshit, like three or four times over the next six months, I heard random women talking about the cutting edge just mm -hmm. out in the wild, like unprovoked by stuff, just talking about the cutting edge. And then I was in a Best Buy in like 2003 and I was looking at the DVDs with my friend Chris and I was like, Chris, did you know that like, if you just say the cutting edge out loud, that somebody, the woman's going to come up and talk to you about it. And then he's just like, really? And I was just like, yeah, it's funny. And then he's just like, okay. And then immediately after this girl from the other side of the rack comes over and she goes, are you guys talking about the cutting? Yes. Edge? Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I, so this movie played at my movie theater and I loved it. 
I loved the cutting edge. I was the only person at the movie theater who liked this movie because we all saw everything that played at the theater. And I was mm. the one that was always like, I love the cutting edge and unironically love it. And everyone was like, you're ridiculous. It is a stupid, predictable rom-com. And I was like, I don't care. I super love it. And customers always ask like what you think about movies. Sometimes they just walk up and they want to see stuff. I think that's weird, but some people just do that. They show up at the theater and they're like, what's good? And I would say, I love the cutting edge. I think it's super good. And everyone around me is at you. <laughs> no, everyone around me is like, she's, it's not good. She's wrong. And they would go see it and they would come out and thank me. I was like, it's a good movie. I don't care. Nice. I love it. It is very like old fashioned crowd pleasing in a, in a way that's yeah. easy to recommend to people. Yeah. You know, I should rephrase that. Is it a good movie? Mm, I really like it. That's the better way to say it. It's enjoyable. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see it it's in the theater, Margo? Of course I did. I'm a chick. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw it with my friends. And then every time it was on TBS, I would watch it. Yeah. It was on TV all the time. And I think D.B. Sweeney's very cute. He is. And I I love uh, Maura Kelly. I think she's a great actress. I think she's really, she does bitchy really well. Yeah. You like her eyebrows. You know? Those eyebrows are divine. I had eyebrows <laughs> close to that, and I plucked the shit out of them. Fucking nineties. And, and now I, I, ugh, I want those eyebrows. They're so, eyebrows. They're so good. <laughs> yeah, they don't grow back. Mm -mm. I Next would... time I see you both in person, let me know if my eyebrows are as good as I think they are, because I think mine are like <laughs> one of my defining traits. Mm. Oh, I think they're pretty good. I will pay attention. But okay. yeah, I think they are pretty great. <laughs> so it used to be the bottoms of my of my feet. It was so smooth. It was like I was using a pumice stone, but I wasn't. It was like <laughs> the stuff of legend. But then over the years, like, you know, a lot of edibles, a lot of drinking. Something <laughs> happened. <laughs> If for some reason you haven't seen The Cutting Edge, I don't want to know you, but it is about a spoiled rich figure skater, Moira Kelly, who is paired with a former hockey player who was injured during the game, and that's D.B. Sweeney, and they are trying to win a gold medal. There you go. Movie summary complete. <laughs> And they only have a few months to do it. Like, that's that's that. Well, so I think it takes place over... Does it take place over, like, two years? Or It's hard to I tell. I don't know. The timeline is weird. It's During super Calgary, weird. In 88, I think it is, they're at one Olympics, and that's where he gets injured and she has a shitty partner. Yeah. And then, I guess, um, then they started doing the Olympics. They started flipping them. So they used to be winter and summer were the same year. And now it's every two years. So right. One, so once it's summer mm -hmm. and then, yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, it's hard to tell with time. I mean, they don't change at all. They they look the same. Yes. Throughout. Um, but they hate each other. Of course. And and she's really bitchy and mean to him. And, of course, she has a boyfriend named Hale. <laughs> and <laughs> he's played, played by, by Dwyer Brown. Yeah. Uh, Costner's dad daughter. in uh, Field of Dreams. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Costner connection. Mm -hmm. He's got a new movie that he's going to direct. Did you hear about that? No. He is passion project got greenlit because Yellowstone's so popular. So he's making this movie like this Western and he's going to be directing his first movie since open range. Oh, oh wow. I will watch. I'm, I'm yeah. pumped. Have yeah. you, have you watched <laughs> Yellowstone at all? Uh, no, I, I keep meaning to, but I don't, I don't have Paramount Network, although I do have Paramount Channel, which I'm not even entirely sure, mm -hmm. like, what the difference is. Like, I know one's like, like, I don't know. I don't care enough. <laughs> uh, I was staying, I was staying with my parents for a little while, and it will surprise yeah. no one to know that my parents love Yellowstone. Love it. Yeah. And so they were watching it when I was there, and I was like, oh, this is, it's a, it's a soap opera. It's a dynasty. It? It's a Dallas, but it's that's why I always thought it was just it's re like refresh Dallas. It totally is. I was like, I yeah. get it. This is it's super watchable. I'm not watching it by myself without them, but I get it. 
and mm. and he's Kevin Costner. So every time he shows up, I'm like, cool. Like I get it. <laughs> They're into it, boy. They fucking love it. It's got big fans. Can I just say I miss the '90s movies? This was a move, like a movie that was actually released in theaters, and it stars DB Sweeney and Moira Kelly. Yeah, yeah. It, it was like them. They had done a few. I don't remember what Moira Kelly did up to this point, but like DB Sweeney at least was in a handful of movies, and this was just like. I don't know. We'll give them like a low budget and we'll try them out as movie stars and see if people like it. And yeah. I feel like they don't do that as much nowadays. No, no. They, I think the budget was like four million, and it mm-hmm. made twenty five million. So that's just like more than made its money back. Yeah. And it, and like you said, it's just like it's very pleasurable. I mean, it, you could watch it with your family. It's it their their relationship. They're they're very cute. They hate each other, and then they don't hate each other. I mean, it's like all the beats are there. Yeah, he gets her drunk. I like the part where he gets her drunk. <laughs> I'm like, she's, she's a she, wild she, drunk man. She's never had a drink before, and he starts her out with tequila. Bad idea. Yeah, yeah. bad idea. As someone who tequila's that's oh no, I not, I'm not allowed to drink tequila anymore. <laughs> It doesn't go well for me. I'll just say that. Oh, no, not good. But I I actually I love when she takes her first shot and her eyes get all big and she likes to dance and I like drunk drunk Myra Kelly. Yeah, I thought it was enjoyable. I I'm surprised also it's very 90s uh the the flash forward with the camera the, oh, the, the special effects which look like the opening of Melrose Place like that really <laughs> <laughs> it's so it, yeah oh my god they don't do that in movies anymore whenever they're like doing skating routines and they're trying to mask like the doubles and things yeah. like that it looks mm-hmm. like a Wong Kar Wai movie I'm just like what is happening here? <laughs> like swoosh pans and stuff like that yeah I sneak it which I don't mean to like jump right to the no, end of it. the movie but like the the finishing move that they're trying to, to do their signature piece like to win the gold and everything like that. Like how did I eat like just practically like the stunt people or the skaters doing it? Like how did that woman not die? I am terrified of that Panchenko move. What do they call it? The Panchenko (laughs) twist. I am terrified of it. I'm like, how does he not crack her head open on the ice? Right. Right. And if, if nothing else, it's like, it's it's like when you're not supposed to like shake somebody and it's just like even if she doesn't crack her head, she's like whipped around so much that like that can't be good for her either. Like she yeah. probably has like vertigo immediately or something. Yeah. And they never show you the move uh, like from far away enough away to understand what they're doing. Like yeah. It's always like yeah. super up close. So, I mean, they describe what they're doing, but we never get to see it. And I'm like, well, that's probably because it's impossible. <laughs> they can't actually yeah, I'm, be I'm done. Yeah, I'm sure it's yeah, a combination of different setups that they put together. Um, I have to say, like, the skating sequences are sort of uneven. I mean, some of them are, are good and some of them were really like... You could tell there are doubles. Right. You could tell that. But she was injured, like, for part of it. Like, she yeah. broke her ankle or something. Yeah. I, I will say this for this movie. I think it shows that ice skating is super athletic when mm-hmm. a lot of people don't think it is. And in that way, um, it reminds me of Bring It On, a movie which I also love, unironically, <laughs> that shows that cheerleading is pretty athletic it's not just like yay go team if you're like doing a competitive cheerleading it's really hard margo i know you love cheer on netflix like that probably shows it too and i think that this shows that it's more than just dancing on the ice there's a lot going on here it looks really dangerous and people could get hurt i don't know how they continue to just fall on the ice repeatedly and just get up and skate again how did she yeah. not fracture her tailbone? Like that, her she landed right under her cossacks. Like, boom! That first time they meet, yeah, he just drops her on there. I'm like, well, I would be hobbled over for a couple of days. Uh, I mean, I fractured my elbows walking my dog. Like, 
I mean, I don't mean to laugh, but, you know. but it's true. Like I fell yeah. walking the dogs and fractured my elbows. He's throwing her around and right. on, like on the ice repeatedly. I'm like, how is she not breaking bones? <laughs> it is bananas to me. I broke my hand in a batting cage. <laughs> oh my God. Ouch. That sounds really yeah. painful. Yeah, the pitcher, the machine was was thrown inside. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that! You should have went to the batting cage that has the the belly itcher machine instead of the, yeah. the pitcher. Can, totally. Can either of you guys ice skate? By the way. No, yeah. I can't even roller skate. I can roller no? skate. I cannot ice skate. I have a really hard time staying up on those things. I can ice skate. Good. I can't nice. skate. You can't roller skate? I can't ski. Oh, ski. No, I can't ski either. I wouldn't even ski get... really no. challenging for me. No. No. And do you watch Olympic figure skating? Of course. Okay. I love figure skating. Yeah. <laughs> me too. So, I, I like... Yeah, is that... So that's starting pretty soon, right? Yeah. It's starting, I think, in just like a week or two. That's why I was like, <laughs> we should do the cutting edge. <laughs> it's yeah, time! <laughs> Now, because of the cutting edge, I definitely like him jonesing to watch some figure skating, but I also want to watch um, the ski jump and the curling. Those are my two favorite of the winter nice. sports. It's a curling is fascinating. It really is. Yeah, yeah. I get I get hypnotized by it. I love it. I love figure skating. I rem- so this was forever ago. This was like maybe early or sorry, late nineties. I was working at a newspaper. And obviously, like, there was a times I forget where they were. I forget what Winter Olympics it was. But there was a, t- a huge time difference. And so the newspaper, we got the winners. But then it was airing on, like, primetime TV here. And I would go home and pretend like I didn't know who won, basically. And my sister and my roommate were watching ice skating. And I would just randomly pick people to win. And they were like, Sonia gets it right every time. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm just super good, man. I could practically be a judge at the Olympics. She's a suit Amazing. <laughs> like, what an asshole. <laughs> Is this the same as cool, was Cool Runnings in 88? <laughs> you mean the, it, you mean when it took place? Field out of them. I'm Thanks, li- coach. I think that's, yeah. I think that was an 88, right? Uh, yeah, that was, that was the 88 Olympics. John Candy. I like where you're going, though, Margo, that this might be in a same cinematic universe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There yes, because they're like, they're, they're, they're Doug or you're Rivers. right. They're in Calgary. I looked it up. Yeah. There you I go. Like to, they could have hung out. Crossover. Thanks, <laughs> the the cutting cool runnings. <laughs> have them all in like really <laughs> colorful gear. <laughs> they come out of just Jamaican gear for their thing god what did we think of the costumes of this movie they were really fucking hideous at the end it's ice skating costumes are terrible i do like the i i do i do like that he was like no i'm not wearing that you Mm -hmm. know um i'm glad the movie doesn't lean too hard into like gay panic jokes right. about figure skating which if you've seen blades of glory i think that's all it is if, if i remember correctly no. um so i'm really glad it doesn't do that i thought on this rewatch that maybe i had not remembered that stuff because there's some stuff with his brother that's really strange like for some reason his brother yeah. thinks he's in the marines i don't remember why he thinks he's in the marines <laughs> I think it's the that's one kind of dimension, I guess, to the writing or the performance that DB Sweeney gives that I liked, where it's like you can tell that he's not intimidated by gay men who are involved in, you know, figure skating or whatever. Like right. because with the costume people or with um I think that other figure skater that they're competing against, the 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 man is gay. Yeah, Brian. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he makes a pass at him at one point and then there is, um, you know, the coach like kisses them both on the cheek before the final routine and everything. And it's not like made into a joke. It's like this sweet moment. Yeah. I think it's just like he knows his brother isn't kind of as tolerant as he is. So it's like, why even bother? Like, it's just like 
I'll just tell him whatever, just so he's not in my business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. There's also this thing about, so after Doug gets um, injured and he's not on the hockey team anymore, he's working at his brother's sports bar. And I guess he's also working in construction. And is he writing to every hockey team and asking for a job? Yeah, I think that's what it is. And then he spends five hours a night on skates. Okay. And he's hanging like a monkey upside down in that construction. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, there's got to be any. Dude, get the ladder. What are you doing? Yeah, like, you are really taking a long time. going to take a long time with that project, dude. This is how you're approaching it. Doesn't this movie make you want to have grown up in Canada and just have like ice business be part of your life? <laughs> yes, like, it does. It's like, oh, I got hockey tryouts. Oh, I got figure skating stuff. It's just like, that looks like, I feel like it's a part of my life that is missing that I now want. <laughs> yeah. You're in Chicago. Or, or you could do it, right? Like, yeah. Or even it's just like, I want to own a bar and have like the, 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 the balding man's hockey haircut where it's just greased in the back. <laughs> And watch the uh, the finals with the whole crowd. The whole town comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sit together. I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except I would be too tempted to do like Mister Freeze puns to everybody. I'd be like, "I used to see you again." Oh my god, I would totally. <laughs> I would go to your bar. <laughs> god, what? And what's the name of the bar? It's like the Penalty Box or something. Yeah, it's, yeah. it is. It's like. Um, what is it? Because it's it's named it's like his last name, right? So is it like the Dorsey? Yeah, something. Dorsey, I think it's like the Dorsey penalty box. Yeah. Or something like that. God, exactly. I love Canada. I need to go back to Canada. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. I'm a Canada file myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm also this movie's soundtrack file because. Yeah, you wow. are. <laughs> They, There's some heaters on this one. There are some heaters. We have Nia Peoples on this one. You want to know about 90s? We have the Joe Cocker cutting edge theme over the end credit. <laughs> Feels like forever. Feels like forever. You've got cover versions of Old Lang Syne. Mm -hmm. It ain't over till it's over. There's another one, too, like a, po a really popular song. I can't remember. Love but Shack. I think Love Shack. Love Shack. I think the gem, I, yeah. though, is Black Box. Um, what's right it called? Right on time. Right on time, because she's just like... <laughs> <laughs> it is totally like CNC Music Factory vibes. Yeah. Totally. I'm here for it. I like it. If you allow me this digression real yes. quick, I brought up Black Box Right on Time official video on YouTube, and I'm looking at the comments just from the last 10 days. <laughs> There's a lot. <laughs> Um, Mick Scotty says, if you're listening in 2022, you're old AF. Um, <laughs> they were listening. They must be old. Uh, uh, Tay Wei Peng nine days ago said, I like and admire the way she dressed. So sexy and seducing and her voice. So attractive. Um, <laughs> uh, you wanted to make the most energetic song in the world, and it stays true to your words to these days. <laughs> um, That's a stalker right there. That's a stalker. Let's see. Uh, there was one other one that was really funny. Give me one second. It was, um, okay, if you're listening to this masterpiece in all caps, masterpiece in 2022, your legend in all caps, legend. <laughs> true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I, I, I texted you guys during when I was watching and I was watching it, I think a little bit behind you guys, you guys were watching it kind of close to the same time. I want to go to that New Year's Eve party so bad where yeah. everyone's in their tuxes and they've got that cover band that's playing Love Shack and it's not over till it's over. And I want to wear a fancy dress and a, I guess a fancy early 90s dress and uh, drink champagne and dance at that party. I would really shine. I'm just saying. You could totally kiss Dwyer Brown at midnight. <laughs> and then you could go, hey, Dwyer, want to have a kiss? <laughs> <laughs> and then Costner just like gives you a wink. He's just like, I see what you did there. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> There's this very strange scene where like he, get, he like he first of all, he barges in on her in her bedroom 
I guess. Yeah. It, she's like naked, combing her hair, you know, like you do. And he knocks on the door, but then just barges in and she's like wrapping herself up in a towel. And he gives her this gift of, you know, one of his like favorite, like coveted hockey jerseys. And it's very sweet. Like he gives her something yeah. meaningful. And then mm -hmm. she gives him great expectations. Because yeah. he's illiterate. That's what he always <laughs> is making fun of how dumb he is. And he doesn't read. And so, yeah, she, it's actually a good book. I don't know if you've read it. Yeah, it's, it's, no, it is a good book. But I was like, it felt like a shitty gift. It's like. Well, she's bitchy this whole time. Yeah, but then she he actually. not loosen up until the end. But I. She's a total Estella. <laughs> Are we, are we supposed to think it's a good gift or a bitchy gift? Because I think it's a bitchy gift. I think it's both. I think it's kind of, I mean, it's interesting because it's like gifts that the recipient probably could care less about. But yeah. like the person who is gifting it, it's very right. meaningful. To yeah, them. yeah I think, exactly. I think that's maybe what it is, where it's like they're maybe at that point just thinking of themselves and not really like thinking of them their partners that much right they switch them back right away mm -hmm. <laughs> right <laughs> they re-gift it back to one another right away did you ever see the db sweeney movie i do like db sweeney did you ever see the one where he's being uh, abducted in space Fire in the sky yes i love that movie <laughs> That's another that like shit. 90s mental cue thing, like where I, I need to get around to seeing it. Ooh. I love that movie. It's bad yeah. shit. Yeah, it's good though. I saw that one, right. but I don't remember that much about it. I will, I need to revisit. You want to hear something Believe. bananas? Yes. Okay. So The Cutting Edge, um, it came out at the end of March in 1992 on its opening weekend, also opening is Ladybugs, another sports movie, <laughs> The Power of One, another sports movie, and the number one movie was White Men Can't Jump, another sports movie. <gasps> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I would, I would give anything to go back to 19, to just, even if it's just not 1992, like when four sports movies came out in one That's... weekend. <laughs> and some really good ones, because I know White Men Can't Jump is what, one, like one of your favorite comedies, right? Yeah, 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 it's, it's like such a good one. Five, yeah, it's great. So at this party, this party that I covet and want to go to, I, is this where they first see the like empty box that is just sitting there for a gold medal that her father yeah. has? <laughs> it's just like what an <laughs> asshole! Like here, someday we might have a gold medal in here, but not now. Like what an asshole! <laughs> <laughs> He's paid for everything though. He is because it's I you know I guess we're supposed to believe it's like his dream not really hers and she's been pressured into it this whole time but I was like what a dick move to just have this like empty box sitting there with no metal it's like put that shit away until she actually wins you dick he's still left over from the stepfather movie <laughs> he's, he's just like do I love her or not love her I forget okay. <laughs> I'm on Google and I Googled the cutting edge and people it's, you know, the, how they have like people also ask and it's like yeah. a bunch of questions and answers. So it says, is the cutting edge a true story? And the <laughs> response is the cutting edge isn't realistic. No one will ever be the real life Doug Dorsey. It's not possible <laughs> to make a hockey player and gold medal pair figure skater in only two years. And it would be remarkable to do it in any amount of years. <laughs> That's wow. a very that's a very good answer. That's a are I'm Moira responding. Kelly and DB Sweeney friends? Well, the two they? main stars of the film spent months together training to be realistic figure skaters. They became good friends, and they're still <laughs> homies. If you believe IMDb, <laughs> so I did read that they because there's all these sequels, by the way, to the Cutting Edge, which I've never seen, even though I love this movie. And I guess they made a deal with each other that they would not appear in sequels without the other. So I they're they yeah. are in the second one and they are not in any of the other ones. Together. Oh, so they appear in the second one but don't star in it? I don't think they star in it. The second one is spoilers, everybody. Their daughter is the figure skater. Ooh. Oh, they're married? Yeah. Okay. Which ruins my question that I always ask is, you know, 
are they still together? Are they together? Yeah. So the Cutting Edge 2 is called the Cutting Edge Going for the Gold from 2006. The Cutting Edge 3 is the Cutting Edge Chasing the Dream from 2008. And then 4 is the Cutting Edge Fire and Ice from 2010. <laughs> Fire and ice. Uh, the second one, their daughter is played by Christy Carlson Romano from Even Stevens. <laughs> I think Even Stevens and, was a little after my time. And Kim Possible, if that helps. Oh, actually, Kim <laughs> Possible does help. Yeah. I haven't seen any of the sequels. None of them. I don't no, think I'm going no. to. I think I'm going to pass. Uh -huh. Even the second one, even with D.B. Sweeney and Moira Kelly, I think I'm going to pass. I'm like, what Christy else? Christy Carlson Romano plays Jacqueline, a.k.a. Jackie Dorsey. <laughs> Jackie Dorsey. <laughs> Jackie Dorsey. So let's pretend the sequels don't exist. Do you think this couple would actually stay together? Oh, I do. Do you, you I think, think so. they're you think they're really in love? Yeah. yeah. I think so, too. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I'm wondering, so, you know, in the big final skate, they, spoilers, everybody, they do the big Panchenko twist that is not a possible thing. And then they end the routine with a kiss. And I assume that means they're going to win the gold. And I'm wondering, do you think any real life skaters have thought about just closing their routines with a kiss like that? Would it play on the judge's love of the cutting edge and then give them a perfect score? Um, because huh. it would work for me. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like, I think the schmaltzy part of me wants to like say absolutely, but I wonder if they're they would think that it's like manipulation or something. Mm. Yeah, you get the scoring is really fracacta. It's very bananas the way they do it. It's like because it's also about costumes. It's about the music choice. There's a lot that goes in there, and the judges can be real pricks. So if they think it's uh, yeah, that they're, they're being manipulated, yeah, yeah. But it's it's I that's my thing is like when I watch them, I'm like, are they in love? Are these two in love? <laughs> even, always, when, like, even, when that. even when they're even when they're brother and sister, brother, even the brother and sister, Tony and Marie. <laughs> yeah, are they in love? <laughs> Do you remember that in Blades of Glory? Did you ever see Blades of Glory? I love Blades of yeah. Glory. By With, the way, yeah. I think it's a great movie. Will Arnett and Amy Poehler as brother and sister that are actually in love. It's so gross. <laughs> it's the best use of Stroke Me by Billy Squire, I think. <laughs> uh, Moira Kelly's first movie was in 1991, so The Cutting Edge was her fourth movie. And her her, her debut was in a movie called The Boy Who Cried. What the fuck? <laughs> what? I... It's called The I don't it's even called know the what the boy this... who cried bitch. I don't even know what this movie is. It says the story focuses on Dan Love. That's the name of the character is Dan Love. Mm -hmm. A young boy misdiagnosed with mental conditions who slowly plunges the who slowly plunges the life of his mother into unbridled chaos. Oh my god. Oh, that Jason, sounds great. Jason Biggs is in it too. And Adrian Brody's in it. And what? Jesse Bradford's in it. They must be little. Yeah, I kind of just want the. Bit. I kind of just want the poster. <laughs> the boy it's who not cried a good bitch. poster. I just want the boy who cried, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, the boy who cried is in yellow font, but bitch is like all <laughs> <laughs> bitch. <laughs> what I remember, Moira Kelly. So she did fire Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Yeah. replacing um Laura, Laura Flynn Boyle she was All in right. Cha yeah and she was in Chaplin but then mm -hmm. like was it like a couple years later she did without with honors the one yeah. with Brendan yes. Fraser and what I remember about that movie mainly was I really loved her hair she had this like really cool like short haircut oh my god I'm gonna look it up right now yeah, I remember like it was that. like kind of long in the front short in the back and like she was just so fucking cute she was adorable. Yeah. Everybody I drank. remember, didn't um, Joe Pesci, like, eat a chicken or something in that movie? He's like, like a, in... yeah, he's like a homeless guy who oh, te teaches them the meaning of life. 
She yeah. was also in Love, Lies, and Murder, which is this TV movie with oh. uh, the girl who played Laura Palmer. Charlie yes. And Clancy Brown. It's a true crime. Yes, I know exactly yes. what you're talking about. Yeah, I remember that. That was a good one. That was a really good one. That was fucked up. He mm-hmm. should be one of our creeps. That good I, call. I have one on our list, I think. Yeah. All right. I'm I'm writing it down. <laughs> but she's been on Law and Order and The West Wing. I remember and, when uh, she was on One Tree Hill. I actually watched the first season of One Tree Hill. Did you really? I did. I really did. Um I was a TV critic at the time, so I was getting paid to watch it. But I did genuinely kind of like it at first, and then it just got real bananas and I just kind of lost interest, so I stopped watching. But I liked her. But she was playing someone's mom, and I was like, she felt like it was, she was like too young, but I think that was the point. I think she was supposed to be like a young mother, kind of a Gilmore Girls situation. But it, it that show is crazy. Did either of you guys watch One Trio? No. Oh, okay. It started as like a drama and then turned into like a full on Melrose Place, totally ape shit crazy bananas drama anyway That's the chad michael murray yes uh, mm-hmm. and then what's her name um why am i blanking sophia, She's still on. sophia bush i was thinking yeah. rose something yeah. yeah sophia bush yeah yeah i met them they were because i was working for ym magazine it was a teen magazine and they were on the cover of course they and- were and they were they were dating at the time, but they didn't want to tell anybody. Oh, that's right. So that was like it was a big secret. Mm. Did you tell everybody? I did, of course. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't tell anybody. We did the Usher the same day. The star studded afternoon. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so what do we think about the uh, competition the girl who shows up at D.B. Sweeney's hotel room and says, you've got a great sit spin. Do you think that's a really good pickup line? Didn't it work with him? It did work with him. Yeah, do, you, do you do you think yeah. it would work in real life? I think, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm asking I, for a friend. I, I have a theory about pickup lines. It's all about, like, you could say anything, and as long as you're, like, into the person delivering the line, I think it would work. Because you could always, like, <laughs> if it's stupid, you could just diffuse it and say it was a joke. And I'm, then you'd be like, I'm oh, going to start so using funny. it. I'm going to start using it. And if they don't respond, well, then they didn't pass the test. That's all. They clearly don't watch the cutting edge. Therefore, they're not right for me. <laughs> do you think like a waiter's ever said to like a waitress like i want to butter your bread and like it for works. sure <laughs> well no no i don't think it works though <laughs> but they for sure said it <laughs> i've heard i've heard all i heard all kinds of terrible stuff when i worked at the movie theater so oh uh, like any you could share that are funny? well just like you know well some of them were just pretty straight up like you know large popcorn small coke and your phone number you know stuff like that and i'm like no thanks Mm. you know stuff like that um i'm trying to think what are some of the other ones i can't remember sorry everybody i'm not (laughs) like i have my gold brain (laughs) it was a thing (laughs) trust me i swear people hit on me i'm beautiful (laughs) (laughs) Everybody love me, please. <laughs> did, did you ever have it where it's just like a uh, kid combo and meet my son? <laughs> Absolutely, that happened. <laughs> oh, my God. I worked at a movie theater for like three days and <gasps> I hated it. And I was at the concession stand and somebody yelled Earth to kid to me because I was too slow why well first of all Um, most customers are huge assholes uh why did you hate it why did i hate it because like i don't i i a lot of reasons i think the people i was working with are just we're just kind of dicks yeah that makes a um, huge that's a huge thing right there yeah and then i 
you know, loved going to the movies. And then like once I kind of thought of it as like, you know, this is a place I don't want to go back to. And you get kind of like that knot in your stomach, like yeah. when you're going to a job that you hate. Like I didn't want that association with going to the movies. So I had that's why I quit so quickly. That is an excellent reason. Yeah. I could and not I say no. Office, so. I could not say no to those free movies. That was the yeah. I, I just wanted to be there all the time, whether I was working or or not. But I also worked with a lot of people that I super liked being around. So that probably made a huge difference. But Absolutely. you worked at a Blockbuster, right? Yeah. And I had I had the experience that you had with the movie theater at Blockbuster where it was like people were really cool and like you just got to hang out and watch movies and talk about movies all day. Yeah. Margo, did you ever do any like movie theater video place job? No, no. I did retail. Yeah. Um, I, I mainly I sold shoes and we used to get um, dudes would come in like, I'm, I'm shopping for my wife. Can you try out a pair of these for me? Uh-huh. And, ugh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some people like, are no. some people are so gross. They really are. I mean, you would just. Ugh. Yeah, people are assholes. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing about selling shoes, though, what, what I really liked is that if somebody was an asshole, you could just walk in the back. Like, oh, I got to get something. Yeah. I'll get you another size. And then we'd go back there and make fun of people. That made yeah. it much more easy. That's true. You can hide. Yeah. You can hide from them. I'm, I'm yeah. sure the people who work at Bed Bath & Beyond made fun of me when I came in one time and I wanted to buy like a gift basket just for myself. But like, I was like, (laughs) this is weird. Right. But like, I had this urge to buy, like to pamper myself and buy like this bed, bath and beyond gift basket. So I went in there and they're just like, and I was just like browsing and they're like, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I'm buying a gift. And then they're just like, Oh, what kind of stuff does this person like? And I'm just like, and then I made up like all this stuff. (laughs) And then, Instead of getting what I wanted, I got what this imaginary person would want that I decided. <laughs> and then I walked out and I felt like such a loser. Oh. <laughs> and I had to like concoct like this girlfriend that didn't exist. And like, it was really embarrassing. And I was just like, stop asking me probing questions. Don't you have enough- <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't you have enough to go off of at this point? I'm like, she likes soap and baths. She's a real person who actually exists. That's all you need to know. <laughs> She's <Yeah>. in Canada. <laughs> you don't know her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. No, I, it's like I never wanted to be that guy, but I made it so much worse. <laughs> So, Adam, did this movie live up to your expectations? Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. It was. It was yeah, exactly sure. What I thought. <laughs> it, was, it was exactly what I thought it would be. Yeah. Yeah. I loved rewatching it, actually. It, but uh, I was surprised how much of it I remembered. Like, it was almost like muscle memory. I was like, God, I watched mm-hmm. this movie a lot because it, it played at my theater for quite a while. I guess, you know, it was a bit of a sleeper hit. I think. And it just stayed in the theater for a really long time. So it was Mm -hmm. one of those ones that I would just walk in and watch on my break and stuff like that. So it was on TV, though, all the time. Totally. Like like a couple of years later, it was always on TBS. TNT. Yeah. This movie's made for TNT, actually. Exactly. It's practically got commercial breaks built into it. Yeah. Mm hmm. It's got the longest training sequence, too. It's really long. Like, half of this movie is just training sequence set to music, which I'm fine with, by the way. Not a complaint. (laughs) Totally cool with it. Yeah. What else do we want to say about the cutting edge? Uh... Can you tell nope. my can you tell my voice is going away? By the way. Yeah, I was gonna say, sound like you're about to croak. <laughs> I'm so sorry, everybody. No, I think we put in enough time on, on the cutting edge. I thought, okay. I think we gave it its due. Yeah. Would you like I, 
Go ahead. I rented with honors while you, we were talking. <gasps> oh, yay. Please, please report back. Okay, I will. I'll let you know. Because that one also played at my theater. But um, mainly what I remember is her hair and the closing credit song was the Madonna song where it's just like, I'll remember you or something. Oh, it was like, yeah. yes, that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I haven't seen it since like HBO in 95 mm -hmm. or something. So I'm curious to see it now. Yeah, Joe Pesci made some interesting choices after Goodfellas because as someone who yeah. watched Home Alone many, many times over this holiday break with my, my son discovered Home Alone, I was like, Joe Pesci, <laughs> what, mm -hmm. what are you doing? But he's he's actually... No, he, yeah, he's, he had that run, yeah, from like 90 to 97 yeah. where he was like showing up in like with honors and Jimmy Hollywood and the super the super. Yeah. The super. I was going to bring up super. that. And I, the super yeah. weird movie. Uh, I was just going to say, I worked like... on, um, Oh, good. <laughs> <Sorry. Adam. laughs> um, I got really excited worked... about the super. <laughs> okay. The super is really interesting. I, I was just going I worked on, um, eight heads in a duffel bag. I did. The oh publicity. my God. I totally I... forgot about that movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Not a great movie. Yeah, no. My my thing was a lot less exciting. It was just that I remember in the super that there he couldn't play basketball because he was short, and I thought that was like comedy gold. <laughs> <laughs> well, my son was kind of obsessed with him over the holiday break. He was very Margot called it. She's like, show your kid home alone. And I was like, Yeah, oh, sure, okay. it's time. And that was his new obsession. And he was like, he thought Joe Pesci was the funniest thing he'd ever seen. <laughs> like he was, he laughed so hard. I think I filmed it and put it on Instagram because I just, boy, he was comedy gold to a 10 year old boy. <laughs> and the movie, yeah. And the movie is, it was very entertaining. He likes the second yeah. one too. He was all in. It was, I like the second one. Yeah. I mean, it's just yeah. more, it's more of the first one. Like, it's just more yeah. of the same, but it just turns out my son likes it when people get hurt. That's all. <laughs> he was like, ha, 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 he's hurt. <laughs> like, yes, yes, he's probably really hurt. Do you want to hear? So I have two lists here. I have either other movies that take place on the ice or other movies from March 92, which Adam already named some. So maybe we want yeah, to do other movies. Okay. So we already mentioned Blades of Glory. Mm -hmm. I, Tanya. It's, okay. it's all right. Yeah. All right. Ice Castles. Amazing. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Ice Castles was kind of a phenomenon when it came out. Like people were really obsessed with it. It had a theme song and everything. People loved it. I it know. Had yeah. Robbie Benson and his tidy whiteies. <laughs> And that sent me into puberty, basically. Aww. Like that was, I remember, yeah, we would rent that video and I was like, yeah. Wasn't uh, he the voice of could, the beast? Yes. He is the voice okay. of the beast. Yeah. Speaking of teenagers, Youngblood. Do you remember no, Youngblood? Yes. Yeah. That's another hockey movie. Yes. Uh, Miracle. That's I, a good movie. Good movie. One of my faves. Yeah, Margot loves Miracle. She's mentioned it many, oh, yeah. many times to me. It's her fave. The Mighty Ducks. Any of the Mighty Ducks movies. Sure. Sure. I, Adam, do you have a soft spot for Mighty Ducks? Yeah, I liked them a lot when I was uh, a kid. I thought I was just the right age for like exactly. the first and second one. And then by the third one, I was in high. I just started high school and it wasn't cool anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I remember seeing the Mighty Ducks and thinking it was better than I thought it was going to be. And, mm -hmm. but I, I totally know that people who were a little bit younger than me, just a little bit younger than me, uh, totally love Mighty Ducks. Slapshot. The Mighty Ducks. From, oh, sorry. Can I go ahead? Something? Yes. Yes. <laughs> the, the Mighty Ducks from, um, was the first time I learned what somebody going on strike was because I remember my mom took me to see it. And they didn't play trailers before the movie, and it was because the projectionists had gone on strike. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Back when there were projectionists. Mm hmm Yeah. 
when I started the movie theater, we still had like each theater I worked at had like a projectionist, like one projectionist who usually worked during the day and helped mm-hmm. put all the movies together. And then like weirdos like me got certified to run the projectors. And then it got oh, to a point where we didn't have projectionists at all, which is mm-hmm. real sad. Thanks, George Lucas. I know, you asshole. You ruin yeah. everything. Yes, that's right. I was a certified projectionist, humble brag. <laughs> I just rented the super. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and I guarantee you that neighborhood is like all gentrified now. Yeah. I, uh, I remember that movie because there's a sequence where they play You Can't Touch This at yes. a house party and they play the whole song. Like, the whole thing is there. Ruben Blades, I think he's in the movie. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You guys yeah, I might have to rent it too. I'm going to have to rent it now. God damn it. Have you seen Slapshot? Of course. No, I haven't seen it. Is it good? Oh, I, I think you'd like it. Yeah, it's okay. 70s. Um, it's It's got uh, these guys called the Hanson Brothers, and they're like the comic <laughs> relief. Mm-hmm. And it's like old school uh, uh, Paul Newman. Yeah. It's, it's a little dated, but it's also filthy. I like filthy hockey movies, so... Yeah, mm-hmm. if you look up a list of like top hockey movies, which I obviously did to make this list, Slapshot seemed to come at number one every time. It's it's yeah, it's a time that does, it's something that just doesn't take place anymore. It's a whole world, it's a whole attitude, everything. Yeah, and then you the, know what else is a little dated? What the super My imaginary girlfriend that I bought. Of- <laughs> 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 Is she up in Canada still? <laughs> Hamilton? <laughs> yeah. She's so busy. I don't know. We just never get our calendars to work. <laughs> I heard that Adam's girlfriend moved to Mystery Alaska, which is the last movie on this list. <laughs> yeah. But then during, uh, <laughs> then she has Indian Summers. <laughs> 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 and gets warm by St. Elmo's fire. <laughs> she feels the burning inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you that, want to hear yes. um, some songs from 92? Yes, I do. Okay, I'm just going to play Humping Around, Bobby Brown. <laughs> I love that song. That's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. PM Dawn, I Die Without You. Perfect song mm-hmm. from Boomerang. Yeah. That's right. Uh, oh, Boomerang. The Cure. Friday, I'm in love. I love, the, I love the Cure. Yeah, free your mind and Vogue. I love in Vogue. And my favorite, Rump Shaker by Rex and Effect. All of them yes. a zoom, 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 and a boom, boom. <laughs> that song is that song is rad, and it was it's fucking rad. I've been watching, or I finally finished, I should say, Yellow Jackets on Showtime. And there's mm-hmm. a scene where they're like, I think at a class reunion, they're playing that they're playing Rump Shaker. And I was yes, like, yes, they, they are. And I was like, that song is dope. <laughs> I, was like, I love yeah. that song. <laughs> so good. I'm like, we need to put Boomerang on the list. I'm like writing it down. That's yeah, I watched it. I did like a series on the summer of 92 movies with Patrick a couple years ago. And we rewatched Boomerang and it was like way, I used to like it, but it was like way better than I even remembered. Yeah, that's, that's, what, it. that was uh, what I was suspecting. I remember liking it at the time. It was just not what I, when you walked in, you think you're getting like wacky Eddie Murphy comedy. And mm-hmm. I don't yeah. remember it being that at all. And I was pleasantly surprised. Mm-hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with a wacky Eddie Murphy comedy. It's just, it was something different. And Halle Berry was so cute. She yeah. still is. She doesn't age. I know. Weirdo. Yeah. She's a but witch. But the moon's mad at her. <laughs> what is that movie? The What's Moonfall it? movie. Yeah, the, the moon Moonfall. Is, is at her. It's, yeah. yeah, it's coming for her. <laughs> it's called Moonfall, but now that I slipped, I just want to call it the Moonfall. <laughs> <laughs> the Moonfall. <laughs> I'm so glad that we talked about the cutting edge. My voice is going away. Adam, where can people find you on the internet? 
Uh, I write articles every week and do podcasts every once in a while at the site F This Movie, um, which is F This the letter F This Movie dot com, and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at uh, I don't remember what my handle is at Risky Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been doing some some YouTubing as well with for F This Movie, where you're reserved seating yeah. with Rob, and those are really great. Thanks. I yeah, love seeing Rob your face. Aw, thank you. Um, no, yeah, Rob is so good at editing those because it's like a real um, like Annie Hall situation where it's like it is one thing when we record it and then you see it and it's like best <laughs> picture. And I'm like, how did you do that? Like, this is <laughs> Like, this is so much better than, like, the nonsense that I was saying when we were talking. Well, I think they're great. And I think you're thank great. You. Oh, thank you. Margo, I'm going to go buy myself a gift basket. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Margo, where can people find you? You can find me on social media at Brooklyn Fit Chick, And my site is brooklynfitchick.com. And if you like the sound of our voices, Margo and I also co-host a podcast called What a Creep. And it is super fun. We talk about creeps of the past and the present and end every episode with someone who's not a creep. And you can find us wherever you listen to podcasts. And it's also on the Spreaker Network now. What? 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 And if you like this show, and I hope you do, you can email us at dorkingoutshow at gmail.com. We'll send you some stickers. You can put in requests. We love requests. It's the best. And you can find everything you ever wanted to know about the show at dorkingoutshow.com. Oh, I guess I should say where you can find me, thesoniashow.com, The Sonia Show, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, all the things. This was super fun. I have, I have breaking news before we wrap yes. up. Yes. Um, so somebody, I, wrote, I posted something before we started talking um, or recording about the cutting edge, and it's become very popular. <gasps> and somebody wrote... Moira Kelly totally crushed it in 1994 and posted like four pictures of like all the stuff she was in. Yes. And then somebody wrote, can confirm as someone as that, that was a PA on the two seasons of one tree Hill, that Moira Kelly is one of the best actors slash humans I ever worked with. <gasps> oh, oh great. I love hearing that. Yeah. She's what a joy. That makes me happy. I'm going to go watch the cutting edge again. <laughs> You're gonna watch the super. <laughs> I gotta get out of here because this expense. This is getting expensive. <laughs>